the, the, da the daughter of the emperor? No. The son of the emperor? No. Is it? The son of the emperor also goes into war. But that's why mm -hmm. the, the... Okay. What? It is time. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> why? <laughs> time to start. Okay, today, today is a feast day in the church. Oh, okay? It's a feast day in the church. It is a feast of the dedication of the uh, Basilica of uh, St. John Lateran. Okay? The Basilica. Uh, we, will, uh, we will explain what that is in a while. Okay, so let's read the Gospel first. It's from St. John, chapter 2, verses 13 to 22. Since the Passover of the Jews was near, Jesus went up to Jerusalem. He found in the temple area those who sold oxen, sheep, and doves, as well as the money changers seated there. He made a whip out of cords and drove them out of the temple area with the sheep and the oxen and spilled the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. And to those who sold doves, he said, Take these out of here and stop making my father's house a marketplace. One of the rare occasions that you find in the gospel where Jesus expresses anger. Right? Uh, so those, those who, uh, who uh, say that Jesus never gets angry, uh, that they only want to portray the uh, gentle side of Jesus, well, are, uh, are not uh, characterizing Jesus properly. Okay? Jesus also got angry. Okay? But his anger, of course, was not out of passion. But as it will explain here, it is out of zeal. Okay? Okay, zeal for His disciples recall the words of Scripture, zeal for your house will consume me. Okay? At this the Jews answered and said to him, What sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered and said to them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews said, This temple has been under construction for 46 years, and you will raise it up in three days? But he was speaking about the temple of his body. Therefore, when he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they came to believe the scripture and the word Jesus had spoken. So, destroy this temple, I'll build it up in three days. Of course, our Lord here is talking about the temple of his body, okay? uh, which, uh, which um, resurrected three days after his crucifixion. And our Lord is talking here of two senses of church. Okay? One is his body, which uh, is also the mystical body of, uh, of Christ, which is us, okay? the church. Uh, and he's also talking about the physical edifice, the place of worship, which is also church. The place where uh, his people, the people of God, the church of God, congregate in order to worship together as a community, as a family of the children of God. So uh, this gospel is um, given to us for consideration today because of the feast of um, the dedication of uh, the Lateran, the Basilica of St. John Lateran. Now why is this Basilica very important and why is it a, uh, a feast day in the church, in the universal church, in the entire church? Okay? Because St. John Lateran is the uh, seat is the seat of the bishop of rome who is the bishop of rome the pope <laughs> the pope the pope francis okay the bishop of rome is uh the pope and saint john lateran is the seat of his bishopric okay and so that is why it's very important and to a certain extent the the lateran Basilica is like the mother church of the entire um, universal Catholic church. Okay, let's, let's read a little bit about its history. 
So the church itself was um, donated by Constantine. The land where it's located and all that was, was uh, during uh, the time of Constantine. It belonged to a wealthy family called the Lateran family. And I suppose that's where it took its name, okay? the Basilica. But it has been given actually different names. Um, where was that one? It has been given the name of St. John the Baptist and uh, it is also called something else. I couldn't find it now. I read it. Uh, it actually has something like three names. John the, the Baptist, John the Evangelist. There you go. Okay. And But prior to that, it has another name too. But anyway, but now it's popularly known as the Lateran, St. John Lateran Church. So this is, uh, this is a very old church. It's been there since uh, it was constructed, started construction at the time of uh, Constantine. And then uh, there was that problem with uh, the two popes, okay? where, uh, where uh, the pope uh, was uh, exiled in Avignon, France. And when he returned to uh, Rome in the 14th century, um, they found the church uh, in ruins. So they had to reconstruct it. And uh, so Pope Innocent X commissioned the present structure in 1646. 1646 so that's how old this church is okay and today we are celebrating that um, um, that feast of uh, the dedication of that basilica which brings to mind <coughs> excuse me for us <coughs> uh, I want us to to understand how important how important not only this church is but all the other places of worship and churches that we have in the Catholic faith. Okay. Let us review the, <clears throat> the uh, <clears throat> pointers of etiquette and decorum or ways of properly behaving in church. You know, I was recently in D.C., right? I was recently in D.C. I was in Congress. We were in the White House also, right, um, this year. Uh, and uh, you know how you know how in every place that we went to they were very strict with how we should behave and how we should conduct ourselves in these places right to the point of even inspecting what you bring inside okay? and to the point of even uh, even telling us how we should uh, be be addressed <coughs> okay in activities that we participate in. So we, when I went there to uh, receive that medal for Grandpa Aaron, there was a very uh, strict dress code that you had to be in to be part of the ceremonies. So if we can do these things, and if we should do these things, in uh, places of importance such as the White House and Congress, you know, then I would like to think all the more should we behave ourselves properly and conduct ourselves in a uh, <clears throat> decent manner when we are in our places of worship, when we are in a church, right? And for, for good measure, for good reason, number one is because that is the house of God. God himself resides there, okay? If the president resides in the White House and if Congress uh, uh, is the office of our congressman, well, there is someone greater than Solomon here, as he himself said, right? Uh, there's someone greater than Solomon here in the church. Jesus Christ is there, body and blood, soul and divinity. He is there in the tabernacle. Okay? He is in the tabernacle. Um, in the same church, you have the altar of sacrifice, Right there in the very center of that church, which represents uh, plenty of things for, for us. <laughs> Joe, God bless you and all your sneezes. Okay, so we have the altar of sacrifice, right? The very table where we witness the miracle of the transubstantiation every time a Mass is celebrated there. Okay? So when we are a church, we are on sacred ground 
much more sacred than uh, than uh, the halls of Congress, much more sacred than uh, the White House or any other place of import. The church is a very, very important place for us. It is our place of worship, the residence, the physical residence that houses uh, the, the sacred mysteries of the Eucharist and <clears throat> the place where that very Eucharist is celebrated. <clears throat> so, therefore, how should we behave when we are at church? How should we behave? I guess the answer is obvious, right? We have to behave uh, in a very solemn manner, as, as, as solemnly as we can. We have to behave um, with devotion when we are inside the church. We have to behave a, 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 and, and be at awe, right? With the, 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 um, the uh, mystery that, that envelopes the, uh, the entire church. And you see, that's the reason why uh, churches are constructed the way they are. They, they, they're, they, they're given the, the, the uh, aura of solemnity, of, of piety, of devotion. And we have we've visited many of the older churches, right? When we went to the missions, well, we also went to D.C. We went to the uh, cathedrals in D.C. We, you saw how grand they are, right? grand magnificent and you 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 run out of adjectives to describe the beauty and the and the solemnity that you find in these uh, grand churches right and there's reason for that because we try to give the best that we can possibly give to matters of worship to things of worship to things that belong to god okay so people who criticize uh, um, you know, some people who try to dress up properly and give the best to God, they don't, they don't understand what they're saying, right? It's like Judas, it's like Judas criticizing uh, Mary Magdalene for using the most expensive oil to, uh, to uh, bathe the feet of Jesus, right? He was saying, oh, that's such a waste that could have been given to the poor. Why are you using it just to wash feet? Yeah? What did Jesus tell him? Well, you know, Judas, the poor you always have with you, but you don't always have me. See? So we can apply what Jesus himself said to Jesus to, to Judas to our own churches. Right? We try to give the best we can, adorn it the best way we could with all the gems and with all the uh, precious stones, with precious metals, with the best drapes, the best um, things we can give to our Lord. But it's a pity how sometimes churches, our churches can be so shabby. <laughs> our churches, some churches can be uh, adorned in less dignified ways than our Lord might deserve. Right? Uh, let, us, let us be conscious about those things, to give the best to God all the time. And so we should also present ourselves the best way we could to God every time. That is why we dress up. In a dignified way when we go to church, right? We, well, there's such a thing as a Sunday dress, right? A Sunday dress. So we always dress up the best way we can. And even if we go to Mass on the weekdays, we also don't go in t-shirts and flip-flops and short pants and sleeveless dresses. We don't do that because we go there for Jesus Christ. We go there to worship our God. We are not there to play basketball or be in a beach or display ourselves. We go there to do what uh, is worthy of God's um, uh, dignity. And then let us also try to practice a little bit more solemnity, devotion, piety when we are inside a church. The church is not a marketplace, so it's not a place to be chatting. It's not a place to be uh, noisy. We have to be respectful, not only of the presence of God there, but respectful of the people who are praying to God there. <laughs> so folks, when, when you're done uh, attending Mass or when you're done uh, uh, praying at church, which I hopefully, hopefully you do when you are at church, 
uh, uh, please have enough consideration for the people who are there. Uh, uh, keep quiet. Take your chatter outside. Right? Don't start chattering as you're walking out the church. And in fact, don't even chatter when you are at church and the pews and all that and all the boisterous laughter and all the boisterous noise you make there. And it, it, it's funny how some of the people who are supposed to be more in the know are the very first ones who violate this uh, this particular kind of behavior. And uh, it's, it's scandalous how some people behave. So let us take our noise outside of the church. Inside the church, let's respect the silence, respect the devotion, respect the prayerful atmosphere that people uh, would want to have because they are there to pray. They're not there to socialize. There's a place for socializing. Get out. <laughs> Don't do it at church, please. Uh, in the very least, learn to respect our Lord's presence, if not respecting the other people who are there to pray. Okay. Oh, uh, and the church is not a theater. Not a theater either. So you're not there to display yourselves. You're not there to perform. Okay? You are there to honor and worship God. So, so uh, there are some people who have the propensity of uh, standing up at the altars or doing things that are <laughs> theatrical. <laughs> right? From priests who love to sing and uh, uh, not out of worship, but more out of vanity. And uh, I'm sorry to say this, but uh, for some of our priests, it's very obvious. Okay? Because uh, they don't follow the protocols. And when they don't follow the protocols, then the motivation is obvious. So uh, <laughs> let's take care of those things. Okay? There are certain manners of behavior that are proper even for priests on the altar. In the way that they say mass, and the way they do their homilies, uh, that the, the church is not a theater. You, it's not your personal um, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, place of performance. No, sir, that's not the place for that. And by the way, speaking of performance, um, there is also appropriate music. Nowadays, you find plenty of uh, inappropriate kinds of music at church. Do you know that there's only one instrument? that actually the church approves of to be used at church for church music. And that is the organ. <laughs> In fact, not even just any organ, but a pipe organ as much as possible. Okay? So all of these guitars, all of these drum sets, and all of these other kinds of instruments at church are actually unliturgical. And uh, it's, it's the wrong way to try to draw people. You know, this all began with, try, with the intention of trying to draw people, especially the young ones, uh, the younger ones, into the church because of the kind of music that they prefer. Well, you know what? There was a poll um, uh, done. There was a survey done very recently. And uh, the overwhelming response of, of young people to that kind of thing is that they said, well, we're not a church to be entertained. We don't go to church to be entertained. We can be entertained in many other places. We go to church to pray. So, so that whole uh, uh, theory that uh, this kind of pop music is going to draw people, the young people, to church, well, it has been proven wrong by surveys that have been conducted quite recently about this matter. Okay, folks, that's it for us. Those are the... Um, Best Catholic practices we could share with you today on the Feast of uh, the Dedication of St. John Lateran. Now we're off to Mass. Have a good day, everybody. Hey, Grandpa's on the call. You want to greet Grandpa? Hi, Grandpa. <laughs> Hello, Papa. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. We'll see you tomorrow, hopefully. Uh, many of us are starting to get sick. It's getting colder and colder here. So I hope those of you who are in colder regions take care of yourselves. Shh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, bye-bye. See you tomorrow. Have a good day. Bye. Hi, how ugly. <laughs>